Hello. Uh, welcome to class once again. So today we will be working on drafting a jacket pattern, a suit jacket pattern. That is what we will be doing for today. And then in preparation for that, I have my uh, uh, pattern rulers, uh, my long ruler, my paper scissors, my tape measure, tracing wheel, and this just to hold the paper down in place. Weight. And also this as well, we work as weight. So everything works right together. So now, let's get to the measurements. The measurements we will be needing for this particular draft. I am sure we've gone through the measurement and if you've gone through the measurement you would have seen uh, everything we'll be needing to use for the measurements. So that is the next thing. Let me write the measurements down now and we continue. So now I have my measurements. Let me zoom it so you can see the measurements very well. So I have the full length, the width length, the chest circumference, the waist circumference, hip circumference, across back, across chest. So in my case, my full length is 29 inches. And my waist length, that is 17 inches. My chest circumference is 34. My waist circumference is 30. My hip circumference is 34 as well. And my across back is 16. My across chest is 15. And then the shoulder measurements, across shoulder. The shoulder measurements, my case, it is 18 inches. So these are the measurements we'll be needing. Once you write yours, then let's get to class. Okay. So now that I have my measurements written down, so the first thing I'm going to be taking is my length. And in my case, my length is 29. But before we go, right at the top here, right from the top of this paper, I want, I want to mark down about 4 inches. That 4 inches will accommodate the collar later. So I'm going to mark out my 4 inches and then the line I will be drawing from there will be my top line. Okay. So this point will be my top line, my neckline. So now that I have this, from this point I'm going to be marking my 29 inches. So 29 in my case is here. 29. And uh, let me mark that here as well, so I can rule all across. Okay. Right here, I have my length. So after the length, the next measurement will be my waist length. And my waist length in my case is 17. 17 inches. So now I have my waist from the top my waist length so another measurement we need to be taking is uh, uh but we'll be working this up on proportion another measurement is the arm hole depth and in my case i am 34 my chest so you work on the proportion of chest measurements so my chest measurement divided by four so that will give me 8.5 in my case, chest divided by 4, 34 divided by 4, that will give me 8.5. So, but because I need enough ease, just in case I may want to add 
uh, shoulder pads. So I will be adding half of an inch to that, and that will give me nine inches for my arm holder. So I'm going to mark that also and square it across my nine inches and square across. Yeah. So once I've done this, I've gotten all the, what do we call it? Is this horizontal line or vertical? I don't know. But we've gotten all these lines. Right here we have the top line, which is the neckline, the uh, chest line. This is also the chest line, the arm will depth, and it also fixes the chest line. Here we have it, the waistline, and right here this is the full length. And then another thing is we need the hip line. Actually, I'm not very sure if that should be a very, very important measurement, but it's still cool to have it. Uh, it should be about nine, eight to nine inches below your your waistline. So I'm going to make it nine inches, and I will fix my hip line nine inches below, and I'll fix my hip line. So I'm going to have to roll that also across. Okay, now that we have all these lines drawn. So the first thing we will be working on is the neck uh, measurements, the neck. So you divide your neck measurement by 12, I mean your chest measurement divided by 12. And that will give me my neck measurement. So, so in my case, that will be about 2.8 or uh, something so I'm going to be approximating that to three inches for the neckline but what you do is you divide your chest measurement by four and right at that point you go up by 0 0.75 so once you do that you connect the point yes and once you do that then you connect your this thing with the curve, your neck with the curve line. Should be yeah, a little curve line like that. Don't mind me. So once you have this, you have your neck for the back part intact. And the next thing we will be fixing is uh, the across back. My across back measurement is eight inches. And right from this edge, I'm going to be placing my eight inches for the across back, you can see that. And then right on this point too, I'm going to be marking my across back too. So I'll be ruling a line like this. So this is my across back measurement. So it is from that point that I'm going to like, uh, for my arm hole, normally what I use for my arm hole, uh, how do I call it, sorry? For my shoulder slope is 2.5 inches. But just in case you, you don't want to like be guessing, you don't want to be guessing your measurements, here is what you can do to get your ah uh, to get your shoulder slope, the correct shoulder slope. Right here I have nine inches. If you divide nine inches by four, I think that should give you 2.25. So from the top, you place that 2.25 right here. So it reaches this point, and from the point you go up by one inch. Yes, that should fix your arm hole. I mean, why do I keep saying arm hole? That should fix your shoulder slope. So this position should fix your shoulder slope. But I want a shoulder slope that is actually lower than that because I've tried it. When I'm making myself one, I realize I need it, I need it a little bit. So what I have here is 1.25. Plus the 0.5 I have here. So 1.25 plus 0.75 is about 2 inches. So I want to make mine 2.5. So that means I'm going to be, uh, this is 0.75 right here, and if we place it right at this point, I have 2.5. So I love my ammo. Oh. Why do I keep saying ammo? <laughs> Don't mind me. So I love my uh, shoulder slope right at 2.5. I'm sure you realize, you know how I do this? So 0.75 from here, and then when I put the 0.75 right at this point, 
I actually have to get to where I have my 2.5 and that fixes my shoulder slope. So I'm just going to be extending that line. So once I extend that line, it's on that line that I'm going to be placing my shoulder measurement 18 in my case divided by 2. That fixes 9 for me. So I'm going to be placing my 9 inches here for my across shoulder. So and then from that point, I'll be connecting from this neck point to the shoulder point. So once I do this connection, I have my neck point and my shoulder point already done. So the next thing I'm going to then do is, this measurement is 9 inches. I'm going to have to divide that by 4 again, and I'll be having 2.25. So I'll be putting my 2.25 right here. You can see. And then extending that point by a quarter of an inch. So once I extend this point by a quarter of an inch, I would have to like connect with a curve from here to this point. Not to the extension, but to this exact point. So let me do that now. With a slight curve, I'll be, ex uh, I'll be connecting the shoulder tip right to this point. So you can see that. And after doing that, uh, my arm hole is also almost fixed. Uh, my arm hole line is almost fixed. So we have the neck, the shoulder, the arm hole. So before we proceed, one thing I would like us to do is let's go to the waistline. On your waistline, you may want to like, because our back, our center back is not really straight. It's actually a little bit bent inward. So to be on the safe side, if you are trying this for the first time, you may want to use four inch, I mean one inch. You go in by one inch from this point, it's always cool, but I've tried it with mine and 1.5 isn't a bad idea for me. But you have to be sure, one inch is always safer if you are trying this for the first time. So I'm going to be using 1.5 right here. Or let me use one inch. Yeah, it's still cool if I use one inch. Let's use one inch to be on a safe side. So you go in by one inch right on at this point, and then you come back here and then mark half of your uh, ammo depth. This is nine inches and half of that will be 4.5. So you want to connect with a curve from this one inch line to that point. You can see to the point you have half of your ammo depth points. So you, you do that connection. And once you do this connection, the same one inch you have right here, you put it right at the hip line and also at the M line. So and then you connect those points with a straight line. But make sure this place should not be sharp. You have to like uh, through this point, you blend it so that you don't have that point sharp. It's not cool to be sharp. So and then right on this point, now you place your measurement of the your, yeah, the calculation you do for this point is your chest measurement, chest circumference divided by six. In my point, in my own, I think 34 divided by 6, that should be about 5.7 something, something, something. So I'm going to be approximating it and I'm going to be making it 6 inches. So this is 6 inches right on the waistline, your chest circumference divided by 6. So that's the measurement you have right here. So from this point, you try and connect to this a quarter of an inch extension. So let me do that. You connect from that this extension to your new to the new point you have on the waist. So once you have that, that's almost fixed. And then the same measurement you have here, just add about half of an inch to it. Half of an inch to it. Uh, and you place it on your hip measurement and your distance. You place it right on your hip and the end line. So once we do this, uh, we are almost through with the back part. Yes, almost through with the back part. So yes, we are almost through with the back part. The next thing we do is the vent. And if you are going to do the vent, you may choose to have the vent, your side vent, you may choose to have it uh, about 2.5 inches 
2.5 inches below the waistline, you will have it, if you have it at this center back, then your vent is going to be a single vent. But if you have it at this side, then your vent is going to be a double, double vent. So I want a double vent and I'm going to like make it 2.5 inches below the waistline. You extend the line. You extend this line or we can do this later because I don't want it to affect all that stuff you want to do. So for now, let's leave that. Let's say we've completed the back part just like this. So thank you for watching. The next thing we'll be doing is the front part.